What's up all you fantasy folks and pick 'em persons out there? Welcome to week 13 of the NFL season where we pick our games against the spreads and also pick our winners. Um, so happy Thanksgiving first of all. Hope you are enjoying um, some food and family at this point. Uh, getting ready for the meal and the football games because uh, this will be coming out tomorrow morning. It's Wednesday night right now. Um, Super excited for the football games tomorrow. So, uh, as always, uh, let's go through last week. Um, win loss, I was dead on. I was eleven and four, crushing. Blue was nine and six. Unfortunately, she can't be here uh, tonight. She's working, so I got to do the picks by myself. Um, versus the spread, though, it was atrocious. Six and nine. A couple so close. Dallas won by three. They're favored by three and a half. You know, Philly crushed, and I didn't. I didn't think they would dominate Tennessee that badly. Um, the Buccaneers laid an egg in the second half. The Cardinals didn't show up. The Chargers, I mean, just gave the Rams a chance in that game. Uh, and the the 49ers are just terrible against the Redskins at home. And RG3 is so bad, and the 49ers can't score any points. And the Saints breeze throw on a pick six. It's just a lot of these unpredictable things, which is uh, why picking against the spread is so fun and and so frustrating as well. So hopefully this week will be a little bit better for me. Um, as always, uh, we're using the TWI uh, index, uh, the percent chance of winning. And let's jump into the games here. So first game. Uh, I got the Lions at home against the Bears. Lions favored by seven and favored in the TWI 109 to 91. Um, and this is a very close uh, matchup. The Bears are trending up a little bit. The Lions are trending down, facing two strong defenses. Um, we knew their offense was bad, but I mean, five field goals in eight quarters, that's all they mustered. No touchdowns. I think they're allergic to the end zone. I think we're finding out more about this Lions team now um, than we did the previous, you know, four weeks compared to uh, the the two weeks that just occurred. Um, but I got the Bears covering this game and maybe even winning this game. Uh, I I believe that Cutler, if he limits his mistakes, he's gonna hit Marshall. He's gonna hit uh, Jeffrey, and he's gonna rely on Forte out of the backfield. I know that defense in Detroit is number one in scoring defense and rush defense, but you set up a screen, you get Forte outside of those tackles, and he does some serious work. And Cutler does that very well, and the Trestman offense does that very well. Um, as for the Lions, um, probably start Stafford, probably start uh, Golden Tate. I feel like Johnson is, is going to be targeted quite a bit, but I feel like the Bears are going to plan for him so that makes Tate a little bit more of an option uh, and Joke Bell Joke Bell will probably run all over the Bears but I think the Bears are in a in a high, relatively high scoring game are going to win and cover uh, this game so let's move on to the second game Cowboys at home against the Philadelphia Eagles both teams eight and three so it's a huge game huge matchup I got the Eagles favored in the TWI 103 to 97 so basically 52 percent favorite to win and cover um, but I, I just don't see, I think the Cowboys at home, they're a different team this year. They've been playing, you know, fairly well at home. Uh, the Eagles have been traveling, uh, not so well this year. And I feel the Cowboys are probably going to cover and win this game. Um, to Romo, Dez, and a heavy dose of DeMarco Murray. Um, and I sat Witten on my bench last week in my fantasy league, in one of my fantasy leagues in favor of Fleener. Bad mistake. Fleener didn't do squat. Win got a touchdown, but that's all he had. But that's all you need sometimes. You know, touchdowns were six, and you know Fleener had 20 yards. Um, so, uh, as for the Eagles, look for Sproles, um, McCoy. I feel like they're gonna bottle him up and try and make Sanchez beat him. Uh, so probably look for Macklin and Matthews as well to have decent games. Uh, next game, huge game. Uh, Sunday night, 49ers at home versus the Seattle Seahawks. Playing for second place right now in the division, both at 7-4. I got Seattle favored 110-90 to TWI at 55%. 
Um, and I have the Seahawks winning this game and covering because the 49ers are only favored by a point. Um, and the 49ers, their offense is just atrocious. I don't think they've scored more than 21 points in the last four games. They've barely been winning. Uh, at home, even, against terrible teams like St. Louis. Well, they've lost to St. Louis and put up 10 points. Um, and I feel that Washington is on just a tremendous downside, probably one of the worst teams in the league. And the 49ers had to get a fumble at the end of the game to win. And the Seahawks just absolutely crushed Arizona uh, last week, uh, just ran all over them, and probably could have been a lot more if it wasn't for um, all those field goals that Hauschka was kicking instead of touchdowns. But they just manhandled Arizona. I think they're trending up. 49ers are flatlining. Seahawks win, cover. All right, move on to the Sunday night games. Indianapolis Colts at home against the lowly Redskins, led by Colt McCoy. Yes, Colt McCoy uh, brought up to the forefront as RG3's been promoted to clipboard holder um, now by the Redskins. So I have the Colts winning and covering. The Redskins are just a hot mess. Their defense is decent, but their offense loaded with weapons. But I feel like Colt McCoy, even though he beat Dallas in Dallas, um, the Colts will be ready for them this time. They won't be overly confident. They didn't play necessarily that well against the Jaguars last week, but look for T.Y. Hilton. Um, look for uh, uh, Andrew Luck and also Fleener, hopefully to get some action this week. And Redskins, Alfred Morris for sure is a good start. And also Deshaun Jackson, good starts. Um, so I have the Colts uh, covering that 9.5 point spread and winning. So next game, Texans at home, favored by 6.5 against the Tennessee Titans. Uh, this game is a toss-up because if um, Arian Foster does not play, I have Tennessee covering. If Foster does play, I will probably have the Texans covering because Foster is a make-or-break for that team. Even though they're favored in the TWI, they're favored by the points, they're favored by the records, um... If Arian Foster is not there, I have the Titans covering this game, but the Texans will probably win the game outright, even with Fitzpatrick um, behind the center because uh, Mallet has a torn peck. But look for Foster if he plays, DeAndre Hopkins. And if Foster doesn't play, Alfred Blue will have a decent game. Titans, yeah, maybe Delaney Walker, maybe Kendall Wright. Um, I wouldn't start Mettenberger unless you have a 2QB uh, two league. Uh, and you're really reaching. Um, but anyways, I got the Titans covering, Texans winning. Next game, Buffalo Bills at home against the Cleveland Browns. This is a big game. Bills favored by 1.5 points, favored at TWI 107-93. to 93. Um, I have the Bills covering this game. I, this is one of those games where it's just so tough. Because um, if we get the Brian Hoyer from last week in Atlanta where he's throwing pick after pick after pick, the Bills will control the clock at home. They will run the ball with Fred Jackson and Dixon or, or Bryce Brown, whoever is in there. And Orton will game manage and get the ball to Sammy Watkins and Robert Woods and Scott Chandler. And they will they will whittle down the Browns. Browns, on the other hand, Josh Gordon back, Isaiah Crowell playing well. Um, it all relies on Hoyer. If he has a crummy game, um, they have no shot. If he has a good game, mistake-free, I think the Browns can win this game, especially with Josh Gordon on the outside. But the defense of the Bills with Mario Williams on that front uh, front four, they're no joke. So look for some turnovers by Hoyer and the Bills to, uh, I think, win and cover this game. Not so sure, but uh, that that's what I'm going to go with this week. All right, next game, Baltimore Ravens favored at home. Four and a half points over the San Diego Chargers. Chargers barely squeaked out a victory, picking one off in the end zone against the Rams with like a minute left. Uh, not even a minute, I had 20 seconds left in the game. Um, so the Chargers could have lost that game. Ravens uh, put a hurting on the Saints in New Orleans. So I got the Ravens in this game. I like Steve Smith. I like what Forsett is doing. I like Flacco game managing. Um, Torrey Smith's been getting the ball a lot more. He didn't get, get it much in the early season. Um, but the Chargers, uh, I will probably start Phillip Rivers on my fantasy team because 
I have either Cutler or Andy Dalton. I might start Dalton, though, against the Buccaneers. But we'll we'll get that game uh, coming up soon. Um, but you got Rivers. You got Gates, who ha- start off so hot, it has just disappeared. But Malcolm Floyd is a decent start. Um, and also Kendall Wright. Look for Kendall Wright. And also Ryan Matthews coming back, coming big last week with 105 yards and a touch. Um, so I got the Ravens covering a win in that game. Next game, Giants visiting the Jacksonville Jaguars. Giants favored by two. Jaguars favored to lose at least 14 to 15 games this year. And I think the Giants uh, are... Oh, crap. Um, cancel. Okay, I hit the wrong button on my computer. Uh, I think the Giants will win and cover this game. They're favored in a TWI 127-73, basically 64% favorites. Um, and I feel like, you know, even though Jacksonville has been doing a little bit more something with uh, Denard Robinson back there and their defensive front is decent, um, I just feel like Eli, Odell, and now that Rashad Jennings is back, um, that's just too much offense for the Jaguars to keep up with. And I think the Giants are going to win and cover this game. Next game, I will have the Bengals winning and covering over the three and a half points over the Buccaneers. So they're favored in the TWI, 135 to 65, basically a 67.5% favorite here. Um, And the Bengals coming off two huge road wins. Dalton playing mistake-free. They're getting Giovanni Bernard back last week. Um, They're getting healthy at the right time. Uh, that offense, A.J. Green is back, and you can see what this team does when it, when it is healthy, and uh, I think they're going to showcase that talent against the Buccaneers, but look out for Mike Evans. Uh, McCown's been targeting him a lot. There's no running back in the Buc- in Tampa Bay, so I don't feel like uh, you, should, you should start Sims or Martin unless you really had to as a flex option, but the Bengals, you know, Sanu is a decent option in the flex, A.J. Green's a must-start. Uh, Gio Bernard and Jeremy Hill, uh, good flex options. Because I don't know if Gio's going to be getting the the bulk of the carries yet. I don't know if he's back 100% from his uh, uh, hip injury that he had. But I have the Bengals winning and covering. Next game, look at this. TWI 100-100, to favoring the Rams because they are at home. That's why it's green there on the left. Um... Rams favored by seven points in this game. I, I just don't see it. Sean Hill, um, you know, they they hung with the Chargers last week. And I think the Raiders will pull the Rams of last week this week. Whereas the Raiders coming off a win, coming off 10 days off, a little bit, a little bit of confidence. They got the first win finally. Um, I think they're probably going to lose this game. The Rams will win. But I think the Raiders will lose by probably six points, probably a couple field goals. They'll try and try and do a last desperate attempt at the end of the game. It'll probably be, uh, I want to say 27-21. But Derek Carr is no joke. He's a good player. Um, James Jones has been picking it up. And if Latavius Murray plays, I mean that's a big X factor for the Raiders because they haven't had a running game all year. Run DMC has been running his way. Uh, out the building he probably won't be playing much anytime soon um, if Latavius Murray keeps doing what he did last week so I got the Rams winning Raiders covering next game Pittsburgh Steelers at home favored by three points favored in the TWI 121 to 79 against the lowly Saints who would have thought they'd be four and seven at this point I mean they crushed the Packers my Packers uh, on Sunday night really mad about the game. I was like, well, here they go. Saints are going to start picking it up. And they've dropped every game since. And every game at home since. It's It's been insane. Um, so I feel like the Saints going up to Pittsburgh is going to be cold. Um, Drew Brees does not like the cold. The Saints don't like the cold. They're used to the humidity and the heat in New Orleans. I think the Steelers are going to use Le'Veon Bell and just gash him. And then when they're gashed, is going to hit Antonio Brown deep. Marcus Wheaton deep. Game over. Heath Miller. Look at look for those guys. I'm starting Heath Miller in one of my fantasy leagues, my PPR, because I feel like he's going to get five or six catches, probably 50, 60 yards, because he's just, he's just a beast. He's a big target for Roethlisberger. 
Saints, start Breeze, uh, start Ingram, and I'm going to start Colson in one of my fan teams because now that Cooks is out, Colson has to step up, and he stepped up last week and got me a win in my fantasy league because he was the only guy playing. I won by like two points, but that touchdown, that 80 yards, and the six catches in my PPR got me that 20 points, and I was able to pull out the victory. So those would be the guys I start there. But I got the Steelers winning and covering. Next game, Minnesota Vikings at home, favored by two and a half points over the Carolina Panthers, the rested Carolina Panthers. So hopefully uh, Cam Newton is back to healthy. He's done with the ribs and ankle, and um, he's been talking with Kelvin Benjamin and uh, Greg Olson, be like, hey, we're going to throw all over these guys. Jonathan Stewart getting back, and also D'Angelo Williams getting back. So now that they have a running game, that's what they didn't have all this year. They were they had no running back. They've been injured all year. I think the Panthers now getting healthy, and they still got a chance to win the division. I mean, there's five games left. If they win out, they are taking the division because Atlanta sucks, New Orleans sucks, and Tampa Bay is something worse than sucks. They're really bad. I mean, just really, really bad. But I got the Panthers covering the spread and winning this game over the Minnesota Vikings this week. Um, like I said, look for Olsen, Kelvin Benjamin. Uh, for the Vikings, look for maybe McKinnon and also uh, Kyle Rudolph. He was a big target against the Packers last week. He had like 50, 60 yards on a couple catches and you know he put up good numbers. I think uh, Bridgewater is getting a little bit more trust in him. So look for those guys to do well for the Vikings, but the Panthers are going to win and cover. Next game, Atlanta Falcons at home against the 9-2 Cardinals. Now after coming after one of their two losses on the season, Cardinals favored 128 to 72, basically 64% favored to win and cover. Um, and two and a half points on the road is easy enough for them to cover, especially against the Atlanta Falcons who have no defense and Cardinals have defense. They have a lot of defense. And they're going to they're gonna put some pressure on Matt Ryan. They're going to stop Steven Jackson. I wouldn't start Steven Jackson unless he's your only running back and every other running back on your team is hurt. Um, but Julio Jones is still a decent move because, you know, Ryan will still chuck it up. They'll put some points up. I think the Cardinals with Ellington. And they got to get Fitzgerald back. He's big, but... Michael Floyd will have a big day in his stay. Um, and also Josh Brown. I mean, he dropped the he dropped a touchdown from Stan last week. Stan needs to play a little, little bit better, needs to be a little bit more conservative. But the Cardinals just looked bad last week. They just looked a team not ready to play. A lot of drops, a lot of miscommunication, a lot of turnovers. So I think they're gonna bounce back under Arians and they're gonna get the win and cover the, for this game. Now, the biggest game of the year. Yes, the Green Bay Packers at home in the frozen tundra of Lambeau Field against Tom Brady, Bill Belichick, and LeGarrette Blount of the New England Patriots. I guess you could add Gronk in there too. But the Packers favored by three points, but are underdogs in the TWI, 105 to 95. Um, and the Patriots, yeah, this is just a tough game, but if it was in Foxborough, I'd choose the Patriots. It's in Lambeau. Packers are averaging about 38 points per game in Lambeau. They've just been crushing people. And I feel like the Packers are going to win this game. They're going to cover. It's going to be a 35-31 just shred fest. The defenses will try and stop the other QBs, but the QBs are just too good. The offenses are too good in this game. Um, and I hope the Packers turn over Tom Brady maybe once or twice to give us an extra possession or two, and that will be the only thing I think that will help us um, win this game. If there's no turnovers by either team, it's going to be a very close game. It's going to be very tight, and it's going to be lower scoring, I think. But I think the Packers are going to win in cover. I know it in my heart, know it in my mind, and I can see it. I can see it. Okay, now let's move to the Sunday night game. Kansas City Chiefs at home, underdogs to the Denver Broncos by one point. They're favored in the TWI 110-90. Uh, the Chiefs coming off a horrific loss in Oakland in Thursday Night Football last week. Didn't see that coming. And the Broncos coming off a huge comeback win against the Miami Dolphins. And the Dolphins playing good ball lately. Um, I thought they had that game. 
But Peyton Manning said no. Emmanuel Sanders said no. The Marius Thomas said N O. Unbelievable. Uh, just a great game. And I have the Broncos using that momentum, going down to KC and winning, probably by a field goal. Probably 27 24, 24 21. It'll be lower scoring. Even though Broncos have a high powered offense. Uh, Tom Ali, Justin Houston on the G, on the Chiefs front line. Um, those guys are good. They're going to get the Manning. But I think uh, the offense is way better for the Broncos, obviously. And the defense difference is not so much uh, between the Chiefs and the Broncos. I think the Broncos, with that offense and their defense against um, Alex Smith, are going to win and cover this game. So look for Jamal Charles to have a big game uh, for the Chiefs and the Broncos, Emmanuel Sanders, Demarius Thomas. Um, and if Julius Thomas comes back, you got to start him because um, he's just a beast, especially in the red zone. And Peyton Manning, start Peyton Manning, of course. So I got the Broncos winning and covering. Last game, Monday night, the New York Jets. They're playing the second Monday night game in a row. I think it's only happened one or tw two other times in history where it's been two Monday night games in a row by the by the same team um, against the Dolphins, the visiting Dolphins. Dolphins favored by four and a half points. Um, and I got to go with the Dolphins. The Dolphins, Tannehill, Lamar Miller, Mike Wallace. If they get Charles Clay back, that's just another dimension. And their defense against Geno Smith. I don't even need to say anything more than that. Against Geno Smith. I mean, Mike Vick was so bad last Monday night um, that they had to bench him and put Geno Smith back in, who was so bad before that they had to put Vick in. It's like, why don't they just like pull someone out of the CFL to like hand the ball off? Because they, they should be better than Vick and Geno. It's, you think, they think you find somebody on the couch somewhere, you know? That's better. I, don't, I can't. I can't think of any names. Favre, you can put Favre back on the Jets right now, and he's gonna win you four games. The Jets are just—they're a dumpster fire. It's bad. So I got the Dolphins winning and covering uh, this game. So good luck out there. Good luck on your fantasy teams. Uh, hopefully, my 11 and four win loss last week translates to my win loss in the spreads this week because I need a big week. I need a huge week. It's been I need a win. I've just I've been floundering in like tenth place in my pick'em league, and I'm ten behind with five weeks ago. It's tough to tough to gain ten wins, but if I get a couple double digit weeks, that will definitely help out. So remember to like, comment, subscribe. Also leave your fantasy questions, your fantasy picks down below in the comments section, and we will see you next time. And good luck this week in your games and your fantasies. Take care.